안녕하세요. 연세이드 치과 원장 이선규입니다. Hello, I'm Lee s o n g y u of the Yonsei with Dental Clinic. I'm honored to meet you all through this online master course at o s t e m Today, I'm going to explain to you about bite restoration. So bite registration is about determining three-dimensionally the uh, positions of the teeth and to record uh, their relationship on the uh, lower and the uh, upper side. And using impression material, after in, uh, taking the impression in the analog, and when you mount it articulator, this concept is needed. And as I explained before, on the upper and lower side, after taking impression, you create plaster model and the, articular, uh, the articulator, you have to mount it three-dimensionally. And if there is no collusion on the back side, then the plaster model cannot be mounted correctly. Then through the bite registration stably, it can be mounted on the plaster model. So taking uh, bite registration, if it's done wrongly or if the bite is not registered and just the impression material is sent to the lab, then you have to mount the plaster model on the articulator, but it's done artificially, then the prosthesis would be, resulting prosthesis would be defect. And if you deliver it to the patient's mouth, uh, you need a lot of adjustment orally, increasing chair time. And if uh, the uh, bite is low, then mastica mastication would be a problem. And ideally, occlusion plane is created, but the bite is too high. And if you have to adjust it orally, then of course, p r o c e s s e s form would all be distort, destroyed. And the patient wanted to go, so you create the p r o c e s s e s in gold. But if the bite is too high, then making a, an adjustment, the gold, gold will be consumed a lot. And the final p r o c e s s e s if the bite is low, then of course you have to recreate and redo the processes again. In bite registration, things to be checked. Now, this is when you use bite index, always bite index and the opposing teeth space, plus the both sides uh, teeth space relationship always needs to be checked. And the difference between taking uh, bite reserves natural tooth uh, and for natural tooth, there is a periodontal ligament. So the error in the uh, process can be compensated, but if it's implant, it doesn't move due to osteointegration. Hence, you have to set the accurate bite. Now, this is the steps for bite registration orally. like the pickup type or transfer type impression coping is delivered, then you take it out and in the mouth, Ostem's bite index is used to register bite and you can send it to the lab. Then this type of plaster model bite index is created and you can mount it to the articulator and the, uh, using the plaster mo model, the a c c u r a t e p r o c e s s e s can be created. Now, always when you register bite, patient's habitual bite needs to be checked. Just, you know, bite once is not enough. You have to check the patient bite uh, many times and look at the area and the space with the opposing, opposing teeth n o o be confirmed. And using the polyvinyl selection, you take the uh, and, uh, bite registration. As I said before, the habitual bite of the patient is the most important aspect. Patient, if it uh, could sometimes take wrong bite, and it's not habitual bite, so you have to find the habitual bite first before registering the bite. So after looking at the position, you take the bite registration, If the patient remaining residual uh, teeth is moving, or if patient has open bite, then the posterior side, uh, the, the bite only happens in uh, partially. Then, uh, then area needs to be checked, and the uh, areas that there is a space or doesn't come into contact also needs to be checked. So, in case of single or two or three implants. 
Then up to before and behind um, tooth, you have to put in the material. You don't have to go excessively all the way to the front. If you do that, there could be error when you mount it to the articulator, like this. The free end, if it's very wide, then using bite index, only necessary part needs to be used for bite registration. And this is something technician would do, but when you mount it articulator, then this uh, excessive areas going beyond the teeth needs to be trimmed uh, in before mounting to the articulator. Or in the free end area, the back area, then where there's impression material in the plaster model, there's no pressure, so there could be open space. Then before in mounting the articulator, you have to trim this area out. The bite space, it's better to keep it minimal. For the polyvinyl silex, which is popular material, it's elastic. So if it's too thick, then there could be error in bite. Hence, if the space is too uh, wide, then you use bite index and the top area of the bite index and the opposing with the and the with the opposing teeth should be at least maximum two millimeters, not more. And if it's one millimeter in space size, the better. On the abutment, when you take the bite reservation, the two millimeters with the should be space with the opposing teeth because this also is the space that also takes into consideration the uh, thickness of the final prosthesis. If the space is too wide, then because the material, uh, polyvinyl siloxin, uh, siloxin is elastic, there could be error. And in that first area, if the same material is used, the error would become bigger. Uh, this is an example in case of multiple implants and in bite reservation of that, all here with using polyvinyl silex and doing it on the helium abutment becomes thicker and because it's elastic, the mounting the articulator, there could be error. Therefore, if in case of a dentulous patient, doing everything with polyvinyl silex might be not the way. You create first with the wax rim and the space between uh, wax rim, you uh, register with using polyvinyl silex. Or it's not dentulous, but on the back area posterior, there is a loss and we have to register bite. Then in the bite index, not use always polyvinyl silexin, but sometimes like pattern resin or resid material uh, could be a recommended option. Now, after taking bite registration, then the bite material needs to be trimmed. This is because polyvinyl silexin bite impression material, there's a de high detail reproducibility. So if you put in the plaster model, there could, could be space. So if it has high detail reproducibility, then it's better to trim with blade. So this is the mite uh, material. Mostly we use polyvinyl silexin. This is because it's very convenient and it only needs 3, 30 seconds to work orally, and it becomes harder within two minutes, and there's no much of a distortion. But as I said, it's elastic, there for elasticity, so uh, it's not recommended to keep it thick. Wax, aloe wax, or modeling compounds and other wax uh, materials are sometimes used, but these days due to convenience, polyvinyl siloxin is the most popular material. So let's compare the materials. If there's a lot of teeth, in other words, in the art, mount, in mountain articulator, if there's a lot of contact points, then typically silicone material, polyvinyl siloxin is the uh, preferred option. If there's a lot of edentulous area, rigid material pattern resin would be the better option, except pattern resin in polymerization, there's heat and smell. Therefore, always, if it's in the mouth, a uh, patient can burn. So it's better to cool it off. And if the bite is slow, pattern resin needs to be additionally added. And it takes a lot of chair time be uh, because it takes time to become harder.
Now, taking implant level bite registration uh, and taking on the abut level is different. So if you take in on the implant level first, uh, patient will have healing abutment. So you could register bite like that, or using bite index, you could register the bite. But this is the popular um, approach these days. Uh, these two is combined into bite impression coping and using that you could register bite. Now if you take it on the abutment level, not impression cap, but plastic cap can be used to register bite and on the abutment directly like when you do on the natural tooth, you can take bite and for custom abutment then custom jig is created to take a bite registration. There there are different approaches like this. So let me explain one by one. On the implant level, as I said before, on the healing abutment level, or using bite index, or using bite impression coping, you can register bite. On the healing abutment, um, you know, it's a typically used, be it single or two, it's possible to use uh, do it in the healing abutment because the thickness, even if it's a bit thick, the other, uh, areas can be used as stops. But if in case of multiple implants, then if it's like this, very thick due to elasticity bite of the bite materials when mounting in the articulator, there could be error. Hence, on the healing abutment, if you take uh, bite registration, if it's single or um, uh, two implants, and if there's stop in other area, it's possible. And on the healing abutment, if it's multiple implant, the bite material is very thick, resulting, as I said, in could result in errors. And that's why you uh, go with bite index. Bite index have different uh, heights, so this distance with the opposing teeth, you choose that would keep it at two millimeters. And if you choose the right size, you can reduce the errors. So the size is all different, like this, 4, 6, 8, 10 to 12 millimeters. The distance to, uh, to the opposing teeth is all prepared through different uh, sizes. So unlike the healing abutment, if you use by the index, then the, the thickness will be different. It will become less than 2 millimeters, hence a less uh, a probability of error. So in case of bite index, index, then the holes here, it's better to block it out with wax. If you don't block out, then the bite, uh, you use mostly polyvinyl silo uh, sin and has high detail of repressibility. So the its hole will be reproduced. And when you uh, deliver the bite index again, it might not go in. So you block out first and then take uh, the bite registration, then the details will not be reproduced and you can put it in the right place or position. So these two, healing abutment and bite index, these two things can is combined into bite impression coping. And at Ostem, there are two types, friction type and hex screw type, which is more general. In case of hex screw type, you have the hole at the top, but there's no hole for friction type. So as I said before, the you don't have to do this type of blockout. If for bite impression coping, this is the structure, gingiva height comes in different sizes, as well as for the abutment height. Now, like transfer type, it's easy to take the impression material, so there is a lot of this uh, uh, holes, and there's no the friction type. There's no hole at the top, so you can just put it directly into position. So using bite impression coping, the it should be something that doesn't hook on the opposing tip. Be section hex type or friction type doesn't matter. Like this. Impression bite impression coping delivered and t patient takes bite, there should be space, which should be at least uh, minimum two millimeters. So this is the actual step. 
uh, orally by the impression coping is delivered, then single or two implants, then bite tray will be used. Uh, using the putty or polyvinyl siloxin, you register the bite and you ask the patient to bite into it. And when after it becomes hard, the bite impression coping uh, is formed in this impression material. Then here, lab analog is attached and to the bite impression coping and delivered again. Then actually, when you put in the plaster, this form. Uh, which is sink uh, uh, or form, such plaster can be created. Now let's look at the abut level registration. Typically, you can use cap or like natural teeth uh, registration. You, you can do it on the abutment level in case of this is only when off the shelf abutment is used. Then there will be cap that is uh, in sink uh, that is in, uh, uh, related to that, and you put the cap. And you take a bite, you check the relationship with the opposing teeth, then you register bite, and then cap, and this bite is uh, uh, delivered to the lab. On the abutment level, the generally natural two uh, bite registration steps uh, will be the one that you will use. Thank you very much. On the through this online lecture, briefly I talked about bite registration. At the offline master course, uh, course I'll be able to give you more detailed explanation and hands-on exercises so that you can uh, learn learn more details about bite registration. Thank you very much.